Bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Come on, people of God. We bless the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And not here in the congregation. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is indeed good. Bless the name of Jesus. Um, technology really can fail you. Know. Um, Psalm 147. You know, we want to you know, lift our voices, you know, sing praises to our God because he is worthy. And so we want to do a couple of verses out of Psalm 147. Could you stand with me, please? Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and comely. Praise is comely. Right? The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bandeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meat. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Sing praises unto him. Amen. We lift you up, Lord. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto understanding so clap your hands and shout Woo! all the people for he is to be praised to be praised sing praises sing praises unto God sing praises sing praises unto God sing praises hallelujah Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. For our God, for God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout. All the people, for he is to be praised, to be praised. Come on, let's sing praises unto God. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Sing praises. praises unto God. Sing praises. praises unto God. Sing praises. Hallelujah. When there is trouble in your life, 
What do you do when there is trouble in your lives and praises? Hallelujah. There is trouble in your lives and praises. What do you do when there is trouble in your lives and praises? Hallelujah. For God, for God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands and shout, Woo! For his to be praised, to be praised. I feel like I feel like I feel I feel like a running, skipping Praise the Lord for what he has done for me He has set my spirit free I feel like a running, skipping Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. I feel like a feel, I feel like a running, running, skipping, skipping. Praise the Lord for what he has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like a running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what. He has done for me. I feel, I feel, I feel like a rock. Skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like a running. Skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done. For my soul does magnify, my soul does magnify the Lord. Oh, yes. And my spirit praises His name. Hallelujah. Even death could not hold Him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Even death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus said, My soul does magnify, my soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit praises his name. Hallelujah, even death. Could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord, even death, even death. Could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. What a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are, oh, you are fairer, more fairer than the lily that goes by the wind. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. What a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, most fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is to me, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God is He. He is saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. 
Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. He is saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, pray. Oh, wonderful, say, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is he. He is keeping me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, pray. Can we do it one more time? Wonderful. Wonderful. Hey, wonderful. Jesus is to me. Also the grace of peace. Mighty God is he. Oh, he's saving, saving, keeping, keeping from all sin and shame. Oh, oh, wonderful is my Redeemer, praise his name. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise Wonderful. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mighty God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank we you, praise Lord. your great Thank and you, sovereign Jesus. name. Oh, Lord. You are the one who, who molds yes, us. Hallelujah. Yes into your image Praise and so we God. we come before you even now lord and we look to you as the the potter you are the potter yes. hallelujah Glory to God. we are the clay yes oh blessed be the Praise name of the lord the left up to ourselves there was no farm mighty god hallelujah but in the potter's hand yes he can shape us Yes. Into that which he wants us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, Lord, we praise you. We Hallelujah. praise you, Lord. We praise Hallelujah. you. Oh, yes, Lord. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand. Crafted into your perfect flame. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord. To live all of my life through your eyes. Say, I'm captured by. I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray. Take me, mold me, use me, fill me. I give my life to the Potter's hand. You only call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes I'm captured by your holy calling set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself lead me Lord I pray Fill me, fill me, 
give my life to the Potter's hand. Call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the Father said, You gently call me, you gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through. I'm captured by your holy calling, set me apart, I know you're drawing me to yourself, lead me Lord, I pray. So I run to you, Lord. Yes, I run to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Your eyes on the sparrow, and your hand it comforts me. From the end of the earth to the depth of my heart, let your mercy and strength be seen. You call me to your purpose as angels understand for your glory may you draw man as your love and grace demand and I will By my point, it's not by power, but by the spirit of God. Yes, I will run the race till I see. Come 
on, say, you gently call me. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by, I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. That's where the Lord wants us to go. Lead, Lord, I pray. Say, bring me. Come on, say. Hold me. Use me. Feel me. I give my life to the body. Demand. 
man. Can we do that one more time? Say, you call me. Say, you call me to your purpose. Hallelujah. As angels understand for your glory, for your glory, may you draw all men as your love and grace demand. Come on, say, and I will run to you to your words of truth. It's not by my not by power. Not by power. Hallelujah. But by the Spirit of God, yes, I will run the race till I see your face. Oh, let me live in the glory of your grace. Every voice say, I will run. And I will run to you, to your words of truth. It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Yes, I will run the race till I see your face. Oh, let me live in the glory. Come on, say, oh, let me live in the glory. Oh, let me live. Oh, let me live in the glory. Oh, let me live. Oh, let, let me live in the glory. Oh, let me live there. Oh, let, let me live in the glory. Oh, let me live. Oh, let me live in the glory of your grace. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we shout to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. You believe that there's none like our God? There's no God like our oh God. And because we have a voice, we're going to shout. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior. Come on, say, Lord, there is none like you all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. I come for my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing power and majesty. Mountains bow down at the sea. Hallelujah at the sound of 
of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. an assurance. Hallelujah. My Jesus, my Savior. Come on, say, Lord, there is, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days. Tell me, I want to praise. Hallelujah. The wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my comfort, my shelter. Lord, you are a tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, let it never cease to worship. the Lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name I sing for joy At the sound of your name, I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise. There's nothing. Nothing compares to the promise. Nothing compares to the promise. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Allah, thank you, Jesus, Lord. Praise be there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promises of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that nothing compares. Nothing compares. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus.
name of the Lord. Thank you, sweet spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just thank everyone for coming out. I greet everyone, those in cyberspace. We're happy to have you worshiping with us today. Feel free to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To officially begin our divine worship, we will use hymn number 93, Higher God. Grown. That's hymn number 93, Higher Grown. I know you've been standing a while, but could you all stand as we sing to the glory and honor of God? Pressing on the upward way, new heights and in every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Him. And stable land, a higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where does arise? And fierce dismay, though some may dwell where these above, my prayer, my is higher ground. Oh, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Him. And stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan starves. At me are heard, for faith has come, the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Oh, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Him. And stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Him. And stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. 
Brown, could you come forward and open? Come with me. Let us worship. Let us bow down. Let us kneel. Eternal Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you. We lift your name on high. We exalt you, for you are great. You are mighty. You are merciful. You are great in all that you do. You are the sovereign God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And so, at this time, we come bowing before you and giving you thanks. Thanking you for the God who you are. The God who never changes. The God who is all-sufficient. El Shaddai. This time, we dedicate our worship to you. We welcome you officially. And we say, the red carpet is rolled out. And we give you our all because you are worthy. Thank you for this day that you have consecrated. A day that you have set aside. And we come not with anything about us. But with everything about you. Because our priority. And this is what you require. That everything be dedicated unto you. And so we thank you for being our El Shaddai for being our Jehovah Shabbat. You are El Roy. You are our El Shaddai. And we thank you that whatever the situation is, whatever the problem is, that you are the untimed God. You are the God who take one thing and you just cover everything. And we thank you. And we are confident that you are all sufficient. As we come, I put before you your woman servant, the moderator, one who you know, your name is stamped all over her. And I thank you for her life. Thank you for what you are going to do in her life. I pray that you touch her lips, touch her tongue, oh God, that whatever she speak, it will be words that are coming straight from you. And we don't have to wonder. Thank you for her. I pray that you continue to bless her and her family as we go into that time too when we hear from your your, your man's servant. Your words are infallible. And so we have come to trust you and to trust whatever you say. I pray that you pour into him your treasure, one that you love with an everlasting love. And you've been keeping him. I pray that he continues to press into you, to reach for higher heights and greater depths. May he not become complacent because there is so much more in you and your people are listening for the words that he will bring forth. I pray that it will not just be in this building, but it will go far and wide, that it will touch hearts, that souls will be blessed and they will know that you sent these words. I continue to bless you over your people. Bless everyone in this congregation. Those who are visiting with us, may may they have an experience that they will want to come back again because it was so rewarding and they will know that your presence dwell in this place. I pray that your Holy Spirit just saturate this room right now. Give us an awesome experience. One that we will cherish. May your words come with power, O God, and with might so that it will touch the very core of our beings. Bless those who are watching in the virtual space and give them a fresh testimony, O God, that you live and that you reign 
and they will know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We bless you. Thank you for the ushers. Thank you for the musicians. May they play out their hearts to you, O oh God, yes. as if they're doing it to someone great because you are that great God. Thank yeah. you for everything that you're going to do in this service. I lift you on high and I give you praise and honor and glory. Let your will be done in Jesus' name, I pray and tell you thanks. Amen. Could you all turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 to 16. That's 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 to 16. When you have found it, you please stand. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 to 16. And we will read alternately. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But we speak with the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words of which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. We have two visitors in our midst. At this time, we want to make them welcome. That's Mr. and Mrs. Thorpe. We're happy to have you worshiping with us. 
I pray that your souls will be blessed. And for those of you in cyberspace, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. At this time, we're at that segment of our worship where we give honor to God by giving him some of our money. And so I will be calling on Deacon Walker, who will be conducting the offering. May we bless the Lord, church. Can we just worship the Lord? It's indeed a privilege and an honor to be in the presence of the God and also in your presence. I stand here to declare that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Of course, those in cyberspace, yes, we are coming here from the Church of God, St. Dean's, Spanish Town, in Kingston, Jamaica. Wonderful sunshine outside, you know, and it's a, a great feeling that we're having to be able to be in the house of God. In spite of all the challenges, pandemic and all, we are here in the house of God to give him glory, honor, and praise. Yes, it's time to, as Sister Estrin said, I like it, to give back to God some of the money that you have. Because indeed, it's a good thing to give to the Lord. It's a good thing to give to the Lord. Proverbs 3, verse, a couple of verses here. Honor the Lord. With your substance and the first fruit of your increase. So shall your barn, your narrow barn won't run out. You know, and you, you know, you'll always have. And it's a fact, the Lord, the word of God is, is, is solid. It's there, it's definite, it's clear. In those days, agri agrarian societies where they have these barns and they fill the barns with that the crop that they would have reaped. They, we understand that. But today, we store our values basically in the, you know, commercial banks and in financial institutions. In, so whether it's in US dollar, Jamaican dollar, or you or even crypto coins, we are saying here, honor the Lord. Give back to the Lord a portion of what he gives you. And you know, the first fruit offering is a very critical. I tried it, brethren, and trust me, the Lord's word comes through. Get a, uh, an increase on my salary, and I decided I'm going to give the whole other increase back to the Lord. And by the end of the day, brethren, I got more than which I gave. You understand what I'm saying here? The word of God is true, and I don't think it's just coincidence. Because to be frank, I was being challenged from long time. I didn't do it. But I decided that this year I'm going to do it, and I did it, and I was blessed. So the word of God is true. It's just my desire and my aim that the Lord will give you the mind to give, the mind to just pour into the Lord out of your, your, the amount you have. I know people have lost their jobs and money such as kids right now. But I'm telling you, let's put God to the test. And say, try my man. Come try. Prove me. Prove me, man. Prove me with your giving. So may God bless you those in cyberspace. You might not be at a congregation now. But make up in your mind. Put it down for when you get back into congregation. You can give to the Lord. Because we know the money that you give will go a long way in furthering the kingdom of God. And that's what, that is what we want to say. So may God bless you. We have a purpose in your hearts to give to the Lord. Praise God. Could you bow your heads while I pray? Almighty, eternal God, God of all gods, you are the owner of everything on the earth. All the riches and wealth on the earth belong to you. And you will give to whoever you choose to give, mighty God. So here we come as a church body, Lord God Almighty, giving the opportunity once more to put back in the offering plate, to give to you, Father, out of what you have blessed us with. We are praying now, Father, that the spirit of giving will just shine deep in our hearts and will give to you as you have given to us. Bless this offering, Jesus. Bless it, I pray. And multiply back to those who will give today. And may your name be glorified in our giving. These mercies we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen and amen. Church, it's my pleasure to call on Sister Yvette Francis, who will sing while the tithe and offering are being collected. Praise God. Okay, Sister Cunningham will sing instead.
Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be God. We're happy to be in his house. So we have to, have to um, abide by the numbers that they say we are to abide by. We know that our praises are louder and bigger than the number 30, right? So today we are in God's house and let us take this opportunity to worship him because we may never know what our next second may be. Praise the Lord. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will.
just want to tell somebody nothing. No matter, no matter what, no matter what may be. the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lord. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. Seven times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. That my trials only come to make me strong. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I've been a lot of places and I've seen so many faces, but there have been times I felt so all alone. But in that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know I was his own. That's why I'm singing now through it all, through it 
Let me thank Sister Keisha and Sister Cunningham for those two lovely songs. Reminding us that God will take care. It doesn't matter what is happening. It doesn't matter what the enemy is throwing at you. God will take care. And Sister Keisha sang and reminded us that through it all, yes, through it all, we will learn to trust in Jesus. So let me just thank them for those two songs. Trust that your hearts have been blessed. And we are at that place now where we will turn our cup up. Because the Lord is ready to pour something into those cups. So come with your cups ready, brethren. Come with your cups ready, those out there. Because right now, you will be hearing from the man of God, our very own host pastor, Pastor Henry Harley. Please make him welcome as you come. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Praise the name of If it is to be worshipped, might as well we do it with gladness. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord. Hallelujah. We are having struggles, but what? The Lord is good. Hallelujah. His mercies are everlasting. And his truth endures. It is of the mercies of the Lord why we are not consumed. 
His mercies are new every day. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be worshiping God on the blessed Sabbath day. Amen. And I want to welcome everyone. Thank God for the privilege. Few in number, but we are still worshiping God. Amen. Restricted under COVID restrictions and all of that, but God is still worthy of worship. And we praise his wonderful name. And we're thankful for just being able to honor him through singing and prayer and study and the preaching of his word. And so I say a very hearty welcome to all of you. And want to also greet those who have joined us online. We give God thanks for you. We are in challenging times. And we are having struggles. And we are living in a world where all kinds of things are happening. But we are still trusting in God. We are trusting in God. So today, I want to share with you from the Word of God, and as I do so, I want to make a reference to a verse in our scripture reading, and that verse is verse 5 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And that verse says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. And bless your holy name for the privilege of worship on the Sabbath day. Forgotten and forsaken by many, but remembered as you command in your word. Hallelujah. And here we are in your house for worship. We recognize that our best effort at worship will be futile unless blessed by your Holy Spirit, your Holy Presence. And so we invite you to come now, Lord, and bless your word to our heart. Hallelujah. And that you will be glorified in all of this. We pray in Jesus' name. And by faith, everybody say, Amen. Amen. We are in a world, brethren and friends, where emphasis and significance is placed on development and advancement. The world we are living in is a world where development and advancement are emphasized. Amen? Amen? We hear, and those who have gone to tertiary institutions and those who listen to current affairs in the media, hear of the developed world. Yeah? And we hear of the developing world. And we hear of the underdeveloped world. All kind of things happening out in the world. Some places are developed. And some places are what? Undeveloped. And some are under development. We hear of the first world. And then we hear of the second world. <laughs> and then we hear of what? The third world. <laughs> we understand that these classifications of developed, undeveloped, and underdeveloped, and first world, and second world, and third world, these are economic classifications. 
or these are social classifications, or these are political classifications. That is to say, people who are schooled and wise in economics make these classifications. Amen? And then we, we accept them, we grow to respect them. And people who are sociologists make these classifications and politicians make reference to these classifications. And we as ordinary citizens, we listen to these classifications and believe in them and begin to order our lives in accordance with them. Amen? So that for some of us, we want to move from an underdeveloped country to what? A developed country. That's true. And we want to move from a third world to a what? To a first world because we are thinking that when we get to a first world, things will get better than they are in the third world. And if we get to a developed society, things will be better than we have in an underdeveloped society. We're in a world where development is emphasized. Amen? If you're not thinking about your own development, people figure that you don't have any ambition. So development is the order of the day and the significance that is attached to these kind of classifications of development and first and second is that if you have the fortune or the misfortune of living in these particular countries, fortune if you're in a first world, misfortune if you're in a what? Third world. The outlook and the chances of success in your life is dependent on the world in which you live. Amen? So if you're in a first world, the chances of your success in life are greater than if you're in a third world. Not true. Amen? And many people leave the third world to go to what? The first world. Why? Because they want to have a better life. They want to make a success of their life. So they want to go to a developed country or a first world. But how many people know that whether there is a first world or a developed world or a third world, there is a better world. Hallelujah. Better than first. Better than developed. There is a new world coming. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you move to a first world, even if life gets better there, there is still better than that better. The best life, hallelujah, is life in the new world. Not just a new world on earth but a new Jerusalem, hallelujah, that comes down from heaven to earth. And the word of God said, Behold, I make new heaven and new earth. Praise the name of the Lord. And so with all of what is happening on earth, we still are looking for a new one. Hallelujah. For this first world has all kind of problems. Hallelujah. One of the big problems in one of the main first worlds that we know is what is called migration. Amen. And one of the big problems in that connected with migration is racism. Yeah. For how many of you know that when you migrate into these first world countries, that you are not first class citizens. 
Amen. Come on, our church. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. You, you leave your third world. And you, you leave your underdeveloped world. And you go to a first world. And you go to a developed country. But when you get to the first world, you're still a third world citizen. <laughs> Amen. So moving from one country to another don't solve the problem. Amen. 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 If you even move to a first world country, somehow there is a stigma. Somehow there is a sense in which though you live and are in the place of development, people still see you as second class, third class, and no class at all. Amen? Amen? Am I preaching to somebody here? Yeah, so the desire that we have to run away from underdevelopment and run away from third world living don't necessarily come to a resolution or we don't find a solution when we go to the first world. And what does all of this have to do with what we are going to be talking about? I am trying to say to you that there are conditions that this world sets that cause us to look with expectation for development and improvement and success. But even when those conditions are met, there are still problems. There are still negatives because the systems of this world are built on the wisdom of men. Amen? The systems of development is based on the wisdom of men. The system of success in a large way is based upon what? The wisdom of men. Amen? But we are called upon to make the word of God our anchor and our mantra that our faith is not resting or depending on the wisdom of man. Amen. Our sense of development is not based upon the wisdom of men. That our understanding of what we are called to be, to become, and to do is not to be found in a first world. Amen? Amen? What we are called upon to become is rooted in the power of Almighty God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. What we are called upon to be and become is rooted in the power of God. And we have faith in the power of Almighty God that when it looks like foolishness to man and when it looks like the development that we are looking for does not reside where we come from, we are saying that our faith and our expectation is in the power of God. And that power is able to override all that mankind has put in place and call wisdom so that you can succeed even though you are not depending on the wisdom of men. Amen? Amen? So here is the testimony of the Apostle Paul. And we go to the first verse in that particular chapter now. We're looking at the first verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. What does it tell us? Can you bring that up for me? I, brethren, 
when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. So Paul had a testimony. And the testimony of God was not based upon what? The wisdom or ability or knowledge that he had. Go to the next verse, please. For I determined not to know anything among you, save what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now let me tell you something. Jesus Christ and him crucified don't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Amen? Jesus Christ and him crucified is not in accordance with the wisdom of men. Amen? It is not in accordance with the wisdom of this world. Let's press on. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Next verse. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul is making an important point here that I want to emphasize that, that we have to be careful how we rely on the wisdom of man. Amen? And we are surrounded by and bombarded with the wisdom of man. Most of what we see on television, most of what we hear in the news, most of what we read in many books, textbooks and other books, are what? The wisdom of a man. Paul said, my testimony is, when I come, I didn't come with what? Knowledge and wisdom and accolades and recognition and elevation by man. Amen? Amen? Now this is important, you know, that we are not dealing with the wisdom. If we follow the wisdom of man, we are going to be confused, church. Amen? If you follow the wisdom of man, you're going to lose the conviction that you have in the power of God. You hear what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Anybody out there? Yeah, if you rely totally on the wisdom of man for how you order your life, you're going to become confused. You're going to lose your conviction about salvation. Amen? Every minute. Let me give you an illustration. How many people right now in this time when we are confronted with this pandemic called COVID and this solution called a vaccine? How many of you are confused? The amount of things you're hearing, you're hearing said it in good. You're hearing say it's safe. You're hearing say it's scientifically tested. That it is, it is something that has been developed and it has the solution to this problem. Not true. Amen. A lot of you don't believe that. Not true. <laughs> a lot of you figure it's, it's, it's a trick. Amen. It's a lie. It's a work of the devil. Is a group of people somewhere trying to control the population and hold us captive, kill all the old people, usher in the new world order. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Yeah. And then you have another set of people saying, well, listen, that, that thing, that is not safe. It is going to change up your genes, you're going to become some kind of other foreign, strange thing. And it is going to change how, how man look and how man behave. And, and don't take it at all. Amen. Amen. I know you're in the church. 
you listen to all of the things. Amen. And your faith in God and in his power to preserve and protect you. His power to keep you vaccine or no vaccine. Your faith in the power of God has been shaken. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Yeah, you think about it. it ha because if you're confused, your faith is shaken. Because under normal circumstances, we would say, I know and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, whatever that day is. Whether it's the day of COVID, the day of vaccination, or the day of no vaccination, I know and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep me. My faith is not wound up or wrapped up in the wisdom of men. Whether those men are promoting vaccine or the men are promoting the evils of the vaccine. My faith is not in any of them. Are you with me? My faith is resting in the power of Almighty God because those who want to kill us off cannot kill me if God is keeping me. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. You hear what I'm saying? No weapon. Hallelujah. Formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me. Hallelujah. God has me in the palm of his hand and nobody can pluck me out of his hand if God has me. My faith is not resting in the wisdom of man. I am not going to let what they're saying about vaccination discourage me. Amen? Amen? Uh, you're kind of a little quiet, not true. <laughs> Amen? I am not going to let no wise man talking about vaccination convince me to take it or not to take it. Are you with me? Are you with me? It is my faith in the power of God. If you know the Lord is keeping you. <laughs> Hallelujah. What are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you. Why don't you sing and shout glory. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Every day. COVID day. Or no COVID day. Every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just the same. Hallelujah. So don't come and frighten me. About the evils of the vaccine. Because that not moving me. Amen. And don't frighten me. And tell me I'll go and die if I don't get the vaccine. Amen. That not moving me either. My faith is standing in the power of Almighty God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Pray <laughs> Hallelujah. Go down to verse 5 that I just focus on. It says we are not speaking the wisdom of men so that our faith will not stand in the wisdom. Because you see, Paul is saying, if I had come and preached wisdom to you, 
then your faith would be in wisdom. And when wisdom is disappeared and gone, what would happen? Your faith would be shattered. Your faith would be rattled until you have some wise thing being said to you. Your faith would be shattered. But who knows here that our faith is in the power of God? And let me explain something to you. What this is saying is that when you got saved, it was not because of something wise that was said. It was not because you immediately tuned in to a word of wisdom. And then that word of wisdom result in your conversion and your salvation. What he's saying is that it was your faith in the sacrifice on Calvary that Jesus made. And the move of the spirit and power of God that made you saved that is what happened that the power of God by the Holy Spirit took a hold of your life it's not no wisdom amen it's not no special knowledge it's no special ability it is the power of God amen amen uh -huh. you know one of the scriptures says for we're not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for what it is the what power of god not the wisdom but what the power of god unto salvation to everybody who is wise no to the smart no to the, a word of knowledge no to everyone that believes praise the name of the lord so my faith and the power that I am standing in is in Jesus Christ. It is not the wisdom of... In anyway. Oh God, help me here. So many things going on here, church. Let me just share a little bit more with you here. In that very passage, go on to verse 6, please. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not what? The wisdom of this world. Nor of the princes of this world. So you see, what is going on here? Our wisdom is not in what man knows and what man can do. And what princes, I told you earlier, that the economists and the sociologists and the politicians have come up with these kinds of structures and systems by which they, develop, they, they explain development. That's all. And we are moved by what these men of wisdom and these princes of this world have come up with as explanation about how you succeed in life but it says we have another kind of wisdom hallelujah amen it's a wisdom that is not of this world amen because according to this verse the wisdom of this world will what come to naught what does that mean <laughs> with all the wisdom of this world and all that men have known and are putting forward it will all amount to nothing amen so all of the fuss we are making about going to first world and all the fuss we are making about development and all the fuss we are making about a better life and so on. If your faith is not grounded in the power of God, you are grounding your faith in the wisdom of man. And according to the scriptures, the wisdom of man will what? Come to naught. No matter how wonderful it sounds now. No matter how significant it seems now. No matter how we can live or succeed without it now. The Bible says, God's word says, it will come to what? Nothing. Amen? Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Hallelujah. So the wisdom of God is wrapped up in a what? In a mystery. What is a mystery? Something that is not easily explained or understood. 
there is something about it that has to be kind of worked out. And that is what this thing is saying. That the wisdom of God is in the fact that our faith rests in his power. Amen? It is in his power that our faith rests. That therefore what we hope for and expect is wrapped up in the power of God. It is what God is going to unfold and unleash and, and favor us with. That is going to make us wise. Not what we know. Amen? It's not what we know going to make us wise. It is what God going to bless us with. Uh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Some people will not be able to understand. How is it that you don't look like you have no sense? Or you don't have no body? Or you don't go to school? And all that sort of thing. And all of a sudden, you look good. You're succeeding. You're living. Because God's wisdom, hallelujah, is being manifested. Not on the basis of man's wisdom. But on the basis of his power. Praise the name of the Lord. So he's going to bless you. Not because you're wise. And because he is wise. But because he has the power to bless. Who he will choose to bless. Praise the name of the Lord. And if your faith is in him. He's going to choose to bless you. Oh glory to God. <laughs> yeah because he blessed Abraham because of his faith and if we are children of faith we are Abraham's seed oh you don't hear what I'm saying oh praise the name of the Lord praise the name of the Lord so the idea here is that what we are having is God's covering over our life no matter what is going on and he's looking out for us and we are escaping some things and being delivered from some things and being provided some things not because we are wise but because God is showing his power to cover and provide for those who have faith in him amen deliver them hallelujah <laughs> praise God uh, pra praise the name of the Lord what's the next verse again there's so much to say brethren which none of the princes of this world knew. So all of the wisdom that the people have in this world, the real wisdom that they need, them don't have it. Because if they had the real wisdom, they would recognize who? The prince of glory. Verse 9. <laughs> Verse 9. But as it written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor ever have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared. Go to verse 10. There's a the verse there that I want, but God has revealed them. Go to verse 11. I think verse 12 is where I want to rest. For no man, hi, hallelujah. For we, no, 12. Now we have received what? Not the spirit of, of the world. So if we don't have the spirit of the world, we don't need the wisdom of the world. Are you with me? Amen. For we have received that spirit. Those who believe in the Lord have not received the spirit of the world. That is why we can say, I mean, goodbye world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ah, goodbye world. I am gone. I stay no longer with you. I have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God so that we may know freely that we may know the things that are of God so here or no we know the things that are of God because we are not relying on the wisdom of this world let me also show you something brethren this is like all today today is a blessed Sabbath day not true amen amen and what the world said is the best day for the business not true if you really want to make life or you want to make money, yeah, the wisdom of the world is why you do. Forget about the Sabbath. And forget about God. Yeah? God wants you to succeed because God said, the Bible said, God help those who help themselves. <laughs> we don't know where to see that. <laughs> 
but 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 you see the bible actually is telling us that there's a wisdom of this world and there's a spirit that is active in this world and that spirit that is active in this world is a spirit that actually responds to and is in keeping with the wisdom of men because the wisdom of men are guided by or men are guided by that which comes from the prince of this world and the prince of this world is the prince of darkness we know that right we know that yeah the prince of this world yeah is satan and he has his own following and the systems of this world are in a large way under his control or domain you with me yeah because he said to jesus just to make sure you understand where we're going he said to jesus i'll show you the kingdoms of this world and what if you bow down what happened Sam have something to do with it not true yeah he has something to do with it so what i'm saying is that we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which us is of god that we may know the things that are of god so because our faith is resting in god the wisdom or the power of god we will know the things that are of god if our faith is resting in the wisdom of this world then what is going to happen we are going to have the wisdom of this world but what does the bible say about the wisdom of this world it is going to come to nothing so you're wasting your time relying on it amen go to the next verse for me go to the next verse verse 13 a couple of verses which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual so then so the, what is going to be taught or what is being taught is not going to be according to man's wisdom but what we're talking about here has to do with what spiritual things and the things of the spirit are not given as it were to the, the, the men of this world the bible tells us that the natural man does not what receive the things of the spirit for they are what foolish is to him amen yeah but the things of the spirit are spiritually discerned and so therefore our faith is resting in the power of god and god's power is what provides us with the blessing and therefore when it comes on to the wisdom of god we can't boast about it so paul said at the beginning i didn't come with excellency of speech now paul was a trained man you ever if you ever want to know paul's ability to speak and to explain and to defend you go into the gospel act 17. amen that speech at mars hill when he tackled the philosophers if you ever want to know whether Paul could speak, look at his presence before the king, Felix and Agrippa. And when he spoke, the, the king who have wise men and all kinds of philosophers at his beck and call cried out, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Much learning has made you mad. That was Paul. And Paul says, I didn't come when I am trying to tell you about salvation with the excellence of speech or of knowledge, but I came and determined to know nothing among you except what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. I want to close off with something very, very important, you know, because this is, this thing here is a big message. Amen. Amen. Amen praise the name of the lord so so my question that i want you to bear in mind for the topic you see here's a question my topic for today is in the form of a question what is your faith rooted in wisdom of men or power of god what is your faith rooted in in other words what are you growing your faith in is your faith being grown in the wisdom of men 
or is your faith being grown in the power of God? In any event, your faith ought to be growing. Amen? In any event, your faith ought to be growing. But as you examine the growth of your faith, the question is, is it rooted in the wisdom of men or is it rooted in the power of God? Because if it is rooted in the wisdom of men, you're going to be disappointed. If you're not disappointed yet, you're going to be disappointed later. Amen? Because the Bible describes the wisdom of men as coming to nothing. So no matter how much you invest in it, no matter how much you put in it, it is going to come to nothing. Amen? What your faith must be rooted in is the power of God. Amen? So, let us notice that the wisdom of man makes sense naturally. The wisdom of man does what? Makes sense naturally. Yeah? The wisdom of man is rational. The wisdom of man is well structured and developed. It appeals to our natural abilities, our natural goals and aspirations. The wisdom of man appeal to our desires. And that is why a lot of people get trapped in it. Amen? A lot of people get trapped in the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of man, because it is natural. And then we say to ourselves, but we are human. I am human. And because we are human, we believe that gives us the right to rely on the wisdom of man. But we have to be very careful. Amen? It will come to none. Let us finish this chapter. And then I go to something else and close. Go to verse 14 for me. But the natural man, what it says, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? They are foolishness to him. Right? Neither can he know them. Why? They are spiritually discerned. Now, this is one of the most powerful passages in terms of helping us to understand why some people is having so much difficulty when, when you tell them that the power of God is able to transform their lives. Amen? Because what you're talking about is a spiritual thing. And once they are in the natural, they are not going to receive it. You have trouble talking to people about the need for them to become spiritually aware and them can't understand it. No matter how much you try, they are not understanding it. Why? The Bible says the natural man cannot. You see, that is why the Bible says, you know, nobody can come to God except what? The Spirit. Draw them. Amen? So there has to be a little awareness and awakening to the Spirit in order for them to receive the things of God. So when we are saying our faith is resting in the power of God, the natural man say, oh, what kind of foolishness you are talking? What kind of foolishness is that? Oh, when you don't see how much things happen in the world, you don't see what is going on. Have some sense. Get yourself in order. Live your life. But a natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit, for they are what? They are foolishness to him. The things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. So, our faith then 
in God and the power of God is not going to be understood or known by the natural man. Oh Lord. Why are you so worried when people don't understand how you say you're Christian? Why are you so concerned and want to make sure that people understand you? That people, people are able to, to understand what you're saying and what you're going through and what you're doing. The Bible says the natural man will not receive it nor know it. So don't worry yourself and try now to fix yourself in order for them to understand you. In order for you to be friends with them that you are going to have to adjust your spirituality. You can't afford to do it. For the Bible says the natural man, they will never, the only way they are going to eventually understand you is when you eventually lose your, all your spirituality. Amen? Amen? When you have lost all spiritual connection and get back purely into the natural, then they are going to say, now I understand you. You know, one time you don't go on like you're better than. Oh Lord, help me. One time you go on like you're holy. One time you go on like you don't make no mistake. And you can't sin. And you're better than everybody. But, but, but now me understand you. Because me realize, say, you're just like we. <laughs> Amen. The natural man. <laughs> Don't receive the things. That, so once you're trying to live for God and living and living and living, you're making a mistake. But if any man sin, he has an advocate. Praise the name of the Lord. And you realize you're wrong. And you confess. You repent. And you get back in line. You know that he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness so you don't walk around with a burden. Hallelujah. You take your burden to the Lord and you leave it there so you move away forgiven. Glory to God. Released from the burden and the guilt. They cannot understand it for these things are spiritually discerned what are you rooting your faith in wisdom of men or the power of God go to the next verse to me let me close off I think two more verses but he that is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is judged of no man and the final verse what that says for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. So, the, the other, uh, in other words, when God begins to guide and give us his kind of wisdom, then we recognize that it is not normal, it is not possible for ordinary, mortal, natural man to understand because God's ways are higher. I want to share in closing a, a, a passage in the same Corinthians. I want to go to chapter 1. And I want to start at verse 18 of chapter 1. And I want to just show you something because I said this is, this is, this is big. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. Look at what it says. You see it on the screen? What it says. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. That the preaching of the cross is not in line with the wisdom of this world. Amen. People who are perishing consider the preaching of the cross of Christ foolishness every day you get up down at church say I pray and I pray to God you ever see God yet you ever see God personally God ever care anything can give you yet and all that kind of thing 
very presumptuous, very rude and out of order, but is ignorant they are in the natural and they cannot understand the things of the spirit. So when we are preaching the cross, yeah, those who are perishing say it's foolishness. But those who believe, they are receiving power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are receiving some additional virtue. Yeah, preach the cross, brother. Because when you preach it, my hope is kept alive. When you preach it, my faith is strengthened. When you preach it, I realize what God has done for me. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Because it is a result of the cross that I am here today. It is the power of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so my faith is resting in the power of God. I am resting in the supernatural power, not regular power. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. There is normal power that you have and I have, but there is supernatural power. Whoa! I hear the songwriter says, there is power. Hallelujah. Wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every glory to God, to break every chain, whatever the chains are, my faith is resting in the power of Almighty God, supernatural power. Yes, I may be bound now, but I am resting my faith in supernatural power. The devil may be having the upper hand, but I am resting in supernatural power. I am resting in miracle working power. Glory to God that what is going on in the natural, there is going to be an intervention and there is going to be supernatural breakthrough glory to God I am trusting in God for supernatural breakthrough it's a miracle ha -ha. songwriter says it took a miracle to hang the stars in space and it's take a miracle to create the entire universe but when he saved my soul cleansed and made me whole it took a miracle of love and grace i am relying on that miracle of saving grace i am relying on the power that is in the blood of jesus hallelujah there is wonder working power hallelujah in the blood of the lamb my faith is resting in the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ. God's son cleanseth us from all sin. My faith is resting in the power of God that is found in the blood of Jesus. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. This is not about knowledge. This is not about wisdom, wisdom of men or wisdom on earth. My faith is resting in the power, hallelujah, of God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to the next verse then. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. But verse 19, yeah, for it is written, 
I will destroy. Hallelujah. So you see it again? That the wisdom of the wise is going to be what? It is going to come to nothing. God go and destroy. Don't anchor your faith in it. Amen? No matter how good it look, how wonderful it sound, no matter how much time them send it, no matter how much viewers them have. <laughs> Amen? 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 And no matter how much degree and accolades our position them have, don't rest your faith in the wisdom of man. Rest it in the praise God. And I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So all of those people who can tell you about first world, second world, third world, and all of those people who can tell you about development and all that sort of thing, God is going to destroy or bring to nothing the understanding. Verse 20. Where is the wise? <laughs> Amen. Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish? What? The wisdom of this world. You see how many occasions you have in the word of God to make sure that you don't rest your faith in what? The wisdom of man. You see it in the Bible. Amen. God warns us and warns us not to put our trust in the wisdom of no, make no man fool you, no care who he means. Amen. No make no man fool you, no matter where he come from. Amen. Rest your faith in what? The power of God. Know that when you were in a mess and miserable, and when you're in sin and lost, no wisdom of man couldn't lift you up out of degradation. Couldn't lift you out of the mire. Couldn't bring you salvation. Nobody could have talked to you. <laughs> and save your soul. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. No matter how good them could have talked, it couldn't save you. Amen. It took the power of God. Amen. And know that it took the power of God to draw you out of sin. Take you out of the mire. Place you on a rock to stay. How can you now turn around? All you're doing is trusting in what man say. What them say. What who say. And what God says is what matters. Am I right? Am I right, church? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And it says, where is the dispute? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 21, what it says. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world knew not God. So, you know, hear this, no, no. You, know you notice that most of the people who are in this world that are wise, they don't acknowledge God. Amen? Them so wise that them get rid of God. God, them turn God themselves. Amen? They, they become so wise. That they can question God and do away with God and still survive. Are you with me? Yeah, they, they, they can live without God, independent of God. Challenge God and ask, where are you? If you are God, why don't you show yourself and prove yourself? Yeah, wise them wise, not true. They have become wise and they are now questioning and disputing. The very existence of God. The Bible says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Amen? Now this is part of what? Talk about a paradox. Amen? The greatest wisdom here is that God has chosen foolishness of preaching to save people oh praise the name of the lord how on earth can foolishness be so useful how on earth can foolishness be so valuable how on earth can foolishness result in salvation that is god's wisdom because god has chosen yeah the foolishness 
of his to confound the wisdom of the wise God has chosen that and so therefore look on us who now have no all about wisdom and this and that and the other and what we are told is that the foolishness of God as revealed by preaching when we as a matter of fact the Bible says how can they hear without a preacher and how can they preach if they're not sent that God has sent preachers to preach and in the preaching God has mysteriously mixed the word preach with the power of his Holy Spirit that it comes to a human heart with conviction and in that conviction the heart melts and responds in repentance and confession and from repentance and confession fashion comes a kind of conviction that listen what you have heard is God's call and you must respond to it and when you respond to God's call and confess your sins you feel a release from the burden that you carried are you hearing me yeah you got a relief from the burn that you carried and we're saying it is the power of God and he has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save people amen what is the other verse says for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek wisdom next verse but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks we're preaching Jesus Christ amen Jesus Christ the power of God unto salvation our faith is resting in Jesus Christ praise the name of the Lord whatever is going on our faith ought to be rooted in the power of God not in what men are saying and church more and more and we may continue to even see it may even increase we are going to be bombarded by the wisdom of men amen we are going to be confused by on the one hand there's a set of wise men wise men defending something on the other hand there are a set of wise men disagreeing with something amen and we are caught up in the middle which are the real wise ones I am saying to you that the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Don't allow your faith and your trust in God to rest upon what men are saying. Allow your faith to be rooted in the power of God. He can save you and deliver you. He can protect you. He has been doing a good job of it. Keep trusting in him. Amen. Don't allow nobody to turn you around. Not allow nobody to turn in a fool and you stop trusting in God. And instead of believing that he who has started a good work in you is what? Is able to finish it. Praise the name of the Lord. You tell me why God would have called you out of sin, delivered you from all kind of trouble and crosses, bring you to a point in life and then all of a sudden abandon you. Why would he do it? That's not the God we serve. Amen. If he took you out of sin and has been bringing you on you, he will keep you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you are to anchor your faith in his power to keep you. Praise the name of the Lord. He can keep you. He will keep you. Don't let nobody shake you and turn you around. No make no situation, COVID or no COVID, turn you in a fool. Have your faith anchored rooted in the power of God not the wisdom of men no matter how excellent no matter how powerful and scholarly the work may be don't allow your faith to be rooted in what man says allow it to rest in the power of almighty God God bless you in Jesus name What is your faith rooted in? Come on, praise the name of the Lord.
in the wisdom of men or the power of God. We know in whom we believe. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise him. If you know the Lord is keeping you, come on, stand to your feet and let us worship the King of Kings. And at the end, the altar is open as we wait on the praise team to come. The altar is open. If you had come and your faith was wavering and you were confused by the wisdom of this world, today we are reminded of the power of God. So allow your faith to rise up in, and believe in the power of God. Come on, praise team. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what, what are, are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Sing glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. Every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, what are you worried about? If you know the Lord is keeping you, why won't you sing and shout? Oh, hallelujah, praise his name, every day is just the same. If you know the Lord is keeping you, why are you worried about? My soul looks back and wonder, my soul looks back and wonder, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over, how I got over, how I got over, my soul looks back and wonder, my soul looks back and wonder, my soul and wonder how I got over, how, how I got over, how I got over, my soul looks back and wonder, my soul looks back and wonder, my soul looks back and wonder, how I got over, Jesus, turn it over to Jesus, turn it over to Jesus, and everything's gonna be alright, alright, turn all. it over to Jesus, turn it over to Jesus, turn it over to Jesus, and everything's gonna be alright, 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 Turn it over to Jesus, 
and everything's gonna be all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, and everything's gonna be all right. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Oh yes. Turn it over to Jesus, and everything's gonna be all right. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, watch a love with him, my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him. Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Put your hands together. Could you come and pray for those who have come? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Just raise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we are so grateful. Hallelujah. 
We are grateful, 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 grateful. We are thankful to you, mighty God, just for the privilege you give us. And, oh God, we are so happy that we, hallelujah, are able to come into your house and just worship you, Lord. So many things are going on. But, Lord, you give us the mind and the opportunity to just be in your house, oh God, and to be together and to be online and to be a part of just this period of worship to the God we love and the God who loved us. Hallelujah. Loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to redeem us. And Lord, we thank you for your word, which I left on record. God, that we can come and we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have poured up on all flesh, oh God, so that we can be blessed by your word and blessed by your spirit, oh God. And we can be enlightened and uplifted oh god as we seek to face the challenges of life this world with all its treasures this world with all its pleasures this world with all its attractions oh god at times we become tied up and tangled up and cares of life oh god and things of the world oh god hold us captive and the wisdom of this world seek to ensnare us oh god and our faith begin to waver. Our faith begin to get shattered. And so today we are thankful. We bless your name. That we can come into your house, O oh God. And we can bow our knees and our hearts in your presence. And say thank you, thank you Jesus. for your goodness. Thank you. And thank you Amen. for your mercy. Amen. And thank you for your grace. And thank you for your power. Hallelujah. Your saving power. Your keeping power. Your protecting power. Your delivering power. Your healing power. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we are not perfect, God. But we are trusting in you. And we pray today that our faith, O oh God, may rest firmly and securely in your power, O oh God. So many times we find ourselves wavering, doubting, wondering. But we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. O oh God, there's so much in your word to strengthen us in our Christian walk. Oh God, when we are confronted and sometimes confounded, your word comes and just strengthens us. And so we thank you, mighty God, that in spite of what is going on in our lives, in our homes, in our church, in our workplace, in our country, our faith can rest in your power. And we know that there is power in your name. Power, wonder working. Power. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need some wonder in our lives. And only your power can bring it. So Lord, we surrender to you now. We bow at the altar. We confess our sins. We admit that we have wandered. We admit that we have strayed. Jesus. We have come short. Jesus. But oh God, we thank you thank for the reminder, for the instruction that our faith should be rooted in your power. God, the arms of flesh will fail. The wisdom of man will perish. The wisdom of this world will come to naught. But they who put their faith in you, in your power, shall never be confounded, never be ashamed. Hallelujah, shall have the victory. Thank you, God, for your words. Thank you, God. And those who have come forward, oh God, whatever the needs are, you are the comprehensive God who can supply every need according to your riches. May you prove yourself, hallelujah, to be a source of blessing yes, 
to those who bow the knee before you, to those who admit before you their need of you, to those who confess their sins and ask for forgiveness, for those who are sick and in need of healing, for those that are bound and in need of deliverance, those that are exposed to danger, in need of protection, those who have need are in need of provision. Prove yourself, O oh God, to be a God who honors your word to those who bow the knee to you. Those, O oh God, who watch by Facebook, those who are online, we pray in the name of Jesus that they may get a new lift, a new drive to put their trust and their faith in the power of Almighty God. That they may not look to the left or to the right or to man, but they will look to you. Mighty God, we thank you for hearing us. Thank you for your blessings. We ask that you'll dismiss us now with your choicest blessings. Cause your face to shine upon us and grant us conviction that, O oh God, we may remain firmly fixed in our faith in your power to the end. We ask his mercies in Jesus' name. And all who believe say, We have come to the end of our divine worship. For those of you who have joined us online, we thank God for you and pray that your hearts would have been blessed. Join us again next week, same time, 11 a.m. As we broadcast, feel free to join us and be blessed. So on behalf of Pastor Henry Arley and myself, it was a pleasure serving you today. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind, I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made 